thank you for just taking the time to sit down and do this interview with me. And uh, thank you also for the video that the Chiefs sent to us last season. That was really cool. Um, so can you just talk a little bit about your experience playing for the Red Tornadoes? Yeah, well, look, I mean, high school football in and of itself is, uh, is a unique experience. It's really the only time in athletics where you get to go out there and um, be on the field with really your best friends. I mean, guys that you went to preschool with, elementary school with, middle school with. So you never really get a chance to replicate that experience. So when I look back on, on my days at Mount Carmel, I think about how lucky and fortunate I was to have a great group of friends, guys that love football, um, guys that are still my best friends to this day. In fact, we um, we are watching Mount Carmel football every Friday and, and, and talking about the Big Red. Um, had a great group of coaches, um, so very fortunate to, to have a, a great group of coaches. And then uh, additionally, I think we, listen, we had a lot of fun because we won a lot of games. And Mount Carmel is uh, certainly one of the most historic football programs really in the country, not just to say the Pennsylvania. So I think when I was coming through my four years, we hit a little bit of a lull. And we took a lot of pride, um, you know, to get Mount Carmel back on track and had a chance to win a state title in 94. And then, um, you know, our 96 team, my senior year, we um, had an undefeated season and never trailed. So that is something we always brag about and, and talk about. So awesome experience. Love Mount Carmel. And everyone in this building here in Kansas City knows where I'm from because I'm so proud of where I'm from. So overall, it was just a great experience and something that um, I think about a lot. So do you think that experience playing for the Red Tornadoes is what made you want to go into sports as a career and get your start in the NFL? Certainly, I think so. And, I, and I've and i talked to a lot of people about this. I think, you know, you're kind of a product of, of where you come from and, and where you were brought up. And uh, again, uh, coming from, from that area, and uh, I think I developed a hardworking mentality and a love for football. And I, and I think those have stayed with me throughout um, my career. And and I think if, if you're born somewhere else, if you're brought up um, in a different part of the country, you might not have those similar values. And and look, maybe it would have been another really cool profession, but um, I mean, football is my life. It's all I've ever wanted to be a part of. So um, Mount Carmel um, certainly guided me in the right direction. Okay. And what are some of your favorite things about this job? And are there any downsides to it? Well, there are a lot, yeah, there are a lot of downsides. Sometimes I, I laugh and um, it's kind of something you always dreamed about, but um, it's one of those careful which you, what you wish for, you just might get it. Um, I love relationship building and, and you know, I, I think everyone gets to see these players on a national stage and, and see all of their athletic ability, but I love getting to know the players and, and the family. I think we do a really good job here at this organization of really focusing on the person. I think football is the easy part and these guys are no different than the students at Mount Carmel or the students anywhere or the college students. I mean, they're all going to have um, things they have to work through and they're going to have some adversities off the field. And um, I love being a part of that, getting to know them, getting to know their families and, and helping them be the best versions of themselves. And, you know, I, we always think that the football, again, is the easy part. And if you get these guys in the right place off the field and um, they can do what they do. So I certainly I certainly love that part about it, um, you know some of the things you don't like is the time demands. I mean, it's really um, a 12 month job and you don't get a lot of downtime. You have a few weeks here and there. And um, this is a business and it's not for fun anymore. So you have to win. There's a lot of pressure, but um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world and, and blessed to have that opportunity. But certainly um, the thing I love most is getting to know the, um, the players off the field. Um, so as the general manager of the defending Super Bowl champions, what's your outlook for this season? You know, we have a good team and I think we have an expectation here to, to compete for Super Bowls every year. Um, we're in the middle of battling a lot of injuries. Um, we have a, a couple players. Um, some of our key players are hurt right now. And um, so I think it's just a matter of, of us getting better each and every week and, and finding ways to win games. And, and hopefully we can get healthy. I think the thing about the NFL is it's 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 not a sprint. It's a marathon. Um, these teams every week we play are, are so good. And there's really, you know, the records may say one thing, but the reality of it is um, each and every week, these teams are so talented. And um, I think the important aspect that we need to really focus on and just is just being the best versions of ourselves and, and getting better 
each and every week. And hopefully at the end of the season, we're, we're as healthy as we can be and we're playing good football. Um, but it's a long way away. And I think we're just focused uh, one week at a time. And, and, and again, just trying to uh, work on the little things and get better each and every week. So speaking of the Super Bowl, Taylor Swift was there last season. How has the Chiefs handled all of the extra attention coming from the off-field relationship between Travis and Taylor? Yeah, a lot, a lot of extra attention there. Um, what's funny is, is that I think over the last five or six years, I think the Kansas City Chiefs have won more football games, I think, than any team in NFL history. And we've um, won three Super Bowls, and we have a uh, – first ballot Hall of Fame coach, uh, first ballot Hall of Fame tight end, the first ballot Hall of Fame defensive lineman, and one of the best players ever to play the game at Pat Mahomes. So we have a lot of stars here. But the very first question I usually get asked by friends and families is about Taylor Swift. And um, our guys, and I think really looking back on our run here, one of the reasons we've been successful is our guys do a great job of kind of eliminating distractions. And now I think the first time Taylor – came to a game was last year in September when we played Chicago and I think even the guys were a little starstruck and there was a lot of players and certainly all the fans were um taking every moment they had to kind of look and see where she was sitting and um but I think the cool thing is is that our guys after that first kind of Taylor Swift experience at the stadium um it be kind of it be kind of came normal for us and I mean now she comes to every home game now so and I think Taylor really appreciates um, Kansas City. It's not, you know, it's not New York and it's not Vegas or L.A. and and where she gets swarmed all the time. I think the cool thing, and I, listen, I haven't asked her, but I, I think she would say that she likes the experience because um, Kansas City has certainly welcomed her with open arms. And I think she can come into the game and be herself. And that now it's you do see, you know, every kind of thinking back to every home game where she has a little routine where she comes down the tunnel and goes up the um the elevator there and um there's no swarms of people it's just like you know she's been doing this her whole life so i think um it's been a cool relationship but i i give credit to the guys because they can kind of um really focus on the task at hand they don't really get caught up in too many distractions are there any things that you miss about mount carmel and how often do you come visit mount carmel yeah the people i mean again i mean to this day, some of my best friends are still from Mount Carmel, and I don't get back as often as I like to just because of, of, of the work demands. But, um, you know, love the people, uh, love the history there. And, and, and again, um, as often as I can, I, I try to make it back. But rest assured, as I mentioned earlier, every Friday night I am um, watching WKMC TV and, and checking out the Big Red. And, um, you know, my dad still coaches there. So um, we're, we're texting. I mean, I'm I'm on Central Time, so I'm an hour behind you guys. So I'll be texting my dad at at midnight, one a.m., and talking about the game and talking about some of the things I saw. So um, just love it, and um, it'll always be a part of my life. So speaking of Mount Carmel football, one of your many iconic plays was when you were a freshman here, and was a kick return for a touchdown against Shimokin in the 1993 Cold Bucket game. Can you just tell me what it felt like at that moment, and do you have any advice for the players this season? Not sure, but that may have been my first touchdown in my career. Um, but I certainly remember that play. Uh, I'm pretty sure we were getting beat pretty good, uh, twenty some nothing when I had that that kickoff return. But uh, what an awesome opportunity that was for me. I mean, your first cold bucket game to to really score your first touchdown. I, I think any player um, that goes on to have success, I think that they can always probably look back to a moment in time when they had a game or had a play and that was the moment when they realized like, yeah, I'm, I can do this and I, I'm really good at this. And um, so thinking about that play, um, I was super fortunate to have that happen to me my freshman year right off the bat. And I think that kind of um, set me up for a lot of success, but um, certainly a thrilling play. And, and, and again, it's something you'll remember for the rest of your life. And as, as far as advice for the players, I mean, look, they have a, a great coaching staff there that they've done well. Both teams have, have done well. I'm also I I keep track of all these teams. So I know that we've won a lot of these cold bucket games in a row now. And I, I think we haven't lost since my junior year, 94, if I'm correct. But I also know that this is probably one of the Shemokin's best teams to bring into this game. So um, like any big game, I think you just focus on the little things and the teams that can execute the small details win. But uh, most importantly, just go out there and have fun and enjoy every minute of it. 
Okay, thank you for that advice for the players and thank you for doing this interview. And I hope that you and the Chiefs have a good luck for this season. Awesome. Thanks so much and enjoy my time catching up with you. Yes, thank you.